living things must perform certain activities in order to survive. Some of these activities might include finding nutrition in the environment, the excretion of waste products, maintaining an internal balance called homeostasis, transporting materials, and reproduction. All living things must perform these activities, and others as well, whether they are a unicellular amoeba or a multicellular human being. The difference here is that a unicellular organism must accomplish all of these tasks with only one cell, while multicellular organisms have many cells to do the work. Since multicellular organisms have many cells available to complete these activities for survival, they are able to divide up the tasks and assign different jobs to different groups of cells. This is called division of labor. Each type of cell in a multicellular organism must become specialized to do their specific task. Cells that are specialized can only complete one task, so they are dependent on the other cells in the organism to complete the other activities of survival. This is known as interdependence. For some organisms, the ladder of life ends at cell because they are unicellular, made up of just one cell. These organisms must complete all the tasks for survival by themselves. They must accomplish with one cell what we do with trillions of cells. These organisms are loners and depend only on themselves for survival. Multicellular organisms, on the other hand, have many specialized cells that each perform a single task and depend on the other cells in the body to complete the remaining tasks for survival. The cells in this case are team players, specialized and interdependent. If even one group of cells fails, it could spell disaster for the whole organism. A group of similar cells working together to perform a certain function is called a tissue, the next step on the ladder of life. Tissues are made up of specialized cells, and there are four major types of tissue. Blood is an example of connective tissue. Connective tissues also include bones, cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. Epithelial tissue is found wherever your body has contact with the outside world. For example, skin, the cornea, or clear covering over your eye, and the lining of your digestive and respiratory systems are all epithelial tissue. There are three types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle allows you to move. Cardiac muscle is found in your heart and contracts rhythmically without you even having to think about it. Smooth muscle lines your esophagus and intestines. The contractions of these muscles are involuntary, meaning they are outside of your control. Finally, nervous tissue is found in the organs of your nervous system, the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. The next step on our ladder of life is organs. An organ is a group of tissues working together to perform a task. There are many organs in your body, including the stomach, heart, lungs, and brain. The organs of your body are organized into organ systems, a group of organs working together to perform a major task within the body. The digestive system is responsible for breaking down the food you consume, absorbing the nutrients, and releasing the waste material. The nervous system is responsible for receiving stimuli from the environment, processing the information, and responding. This system has a great deal of control over the other systems. The endocrine system produces hormones that help to maintain homeostasis. This system also works with the nervous system, coordinating and controlling many of the other systems in the body. Those organ systems and many others come together to form an entire multicellular organism, like a human being. It's amazing to think that a human being has trillions of cells working together to accomplish the tasks necessary for survival, while unicellular organisms, like this paramecium, is capable of doing that with just one single cell. 
It's truly a jack of all trades.